Welcome to Cypress Technologies, Tube Turns Products, Inspection and Maintenance of a Double Bolt Closure. This video is going to cover uh, basic inspection and maintenance procedures that can be done in the field for our customers and follow all the way through to get you to completion to keep your closures working properly. So what we want to first start talking about today is safety. It's very important that in the field that you always required to follow all of your safety procedures. Uh, here in this environment it is controlled. I'm wearing my safety glasses and I'm wearing steel-toed boots. Out in the field you may be required to wear hard hats, uh, flame resistant materials, uh, it just depends. So make sure that when you're on your facility site that you follow all those safety instructions so nobody gets hurt. Okay, so starting off I'm going to introduce you to the main parts of the double bolt closure. Uh, the double bolt consists of three main parts and some other sub-assemblies. The three main parts are, are going to consist of the yokes. The yokes are a split ring, they're right here. You also have the head, which is right here in the center. On the back side that you cannot see is the hub. The hub is the part that is connected to the pipe. In addition to those three main parts, we also have the pressure warning device. The pressure warning device is the safety device that keeps you from being able to open the closure while it's under pressure. On the 12 and 6 o'clock, you're going to have your yoke bolts. Those are the parts that hold the yokes together and keep it closed. You also, in addition to that, have your handle and your hinge, and those are all the parts of a yoke bolt closure. So now we're going to start on the initial preparation for opening your double bolt closure. And it's very important that you make sure there is no pressure behind the closure. You should never use the PWD to release pressure in the closure or in the lines. Starting off, you want to make sure all valves are closed, shut off, whatever is in that area that you would need to release the pressure on, that all needs to be taken care of before you can try to open the double bolt closure. After you know and you verify that there is no pressure behind the closure, you can then start by releasing uh, the pressure warning device. These just unscrew. Again, it is very important that you do not have pressure and that you've got all the pressure out from behind the closure before you unscrew the pressure warning device. After you've unscrewed the pressure warning device, you will notice there's a threaded nipple here. Now what you would do is you unscrew this, you can take a fine rod like this, and to make sure there's no blockage behind the nipple there in the closure, you can just slide that in, run that through, make sure there's no blockage. This one's clear, so we're ready to proceed. After you've uh, checked to make sure the closure has been uh, depressurized, there's no pressure behind the closure, you can reinstall the PWD and just leave it loose so the flaps would be able to fall away from the yoke. As you can see, they are pushed back away from the yoke on the top and the bottom. Then you're going to have to loosen the yoke bolt by using a wrench, and you're going to loosen that so that the yokes will start spreading apart. So once you have loosened the yoke bolts up, you'll see the yokes are all the way out. They're clearing the head. Now we can begin the inspection on the closure. What you'd want to start with is the PWD. Make sure that it's opened all the way up. On the inside of here, there is a gasket. That gasket from time to time needs to be changed and you need to inspect it. You can start with a small piece of wire and go into the holes at the very top. You'll see the gasket at the top and then you can push it out and down and slowly work it down. It may take a few minutes, but eventually if you work it, you can pull the gasket out of the bottom. This gasket here is damaged and needs to be replaced, so you want to make sure that you replace that before you put that PWD back together. This is a new gasket. This new gasket, very simple. You just place it inside the PWD. It will go all the way to the bottom, no problem. You can then place the PWD back on the nipple and let it sit there so that it does not lose the gasket. After you've done that to both PWDs, top and bottom, at the 12 and 6 o'clock position, you can then open the closure. The closure is going to swing out on its hinges and you'll notice immediately that we have the head surface here. 
We have the hub surface here, the O-ring, and the O-ring groove. In addition to that, the inside of this yoke is also very important. So what we we'll usually start off with is we'll go ahead and remove the O-ring out of the closure. Sometimes you have to take a, a piece of metal, something flat that you're not going to damage the closure with in order to pry the O-ring out. You want to be careful with the O-ring when you remove it. Sometimes these O-rings should be reused after you've inspected them. Uh, a quick inspection of the O-ring, you can rub your fingers across it and look all the way down the length of the O-ring. You're going to look for cracks, uh, cuts, check marks, dried areas, anything like that that would cause the O-ring to no longer be flexible and be able to seal. You'll then want to replace that O-ring with a new one. After you've checked the O-ring out, set it off to the side. At this point, we're going to take a look at the head surface. It is very important that all the sealing surfaces, the head and hub, are smooth. There are no dents, dings, or any type of damages in them. You do not want any debris, dents, or dings inside of the O-ring groove. You can run your fingers across the entire surface of the head and very quickly be able to feel a, feel a tactile smoothness. You'll note if you have any corrosion or debris on there, you'll want to remove that. After you've inspected the head, you'll want to move to the hub sealing surface. The hub sealing surface also should be smooth to the touch. There should be no debris on the inside of the O-ring. And the, the hub should be smooth all the way around and no corrosion inside of the O-ring groove or on the hub surface. If you do find corrosion, you can hit it gently with a piece of sandpaper or a scrubbing pad, and that will remove any corrosion off the surface. It's very important that you go concentric all the way around so that you're not creating sides cuts into the closure sealing surface. After you've inspected the hub, you've inspected the O-ring groove, you've noticed that there's no corrosion, there's no debris, there's no damage to the hub, you're also going to look on the inside of the yokes. This yoke lap surface here is what holds the head and the hub together. These are not to have any debris in them, any excessive corrosion, and should be well maintained. Uh, after you've inspected them for debris and corrosion, you would want to oil or grease these with uh, any type of uh, petroleum jelly or grease to keep from corrosion building up on them in the future. So what we're going to do is we're going to inspect for excessive wear on the yoke bolt. And how we're going to do that is we're going to measure the outside and towards the middle of the yoke bolt. Now, you don't have to remove the yoke bolt for this. You can just tighten the closure down just a little bit while it's open, and you'll have access to the outside of the yoke bolt and to the middle side of the yoke bolt where the wear would happen. I just so happen to have one out that we can take a look at to make it a little bit easier. So what you're going to do is you're going to use a set of calipers and take your measurements. The outside of this doesn't get as much wear because it's not in contact with the threaded nut pockets. So you're going to measure the outside of the yoke bolt. Right towards the tip, you're going to measure the outside diameter. You're going to take me the measurement and you're going to make note of that measurement. After you've made note of that measurement, you're going to go to the wear area. This would be the area that is going to get the most wear when the yoke is closed. So it's going to be towards the middle and behind these threads. They're going to be close to this yoke bolt holder block area, right around here on the closure. You're going to take a measurement there. You're going to note that measurement. It's very important that these are not out by anything further than 30 thousandths. If they are out beyond 30 thousandths, it was important that you replace the yoke bolts in a pair. After you've measured, uh, it is recommended that you use heavy grease or an anti-seize compound on the threads when you place them back into the closure. So now we're going to check the concentricity of the head and hub of the closure. It is very important for sealing purposes that the head and the hub be concentric to one another. What you're going to do is you're going to close the head down and you're going to feel all the way around the closure to feel for any differences or gaps between the head and the hub. Feel your finger around. If you notice that there is a ridge there, 
you're going to want to measure that. Now, depending on your closure, you're going to have different tolerances for the gaps. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to check the procedure checklist that is included with our procedures for this. In this closure's case, I'm only allowed a sixteenth of an inch. The way you can measure that is you can use a set of feeler gauges like I have here. You can set them there and then you can feel and see if that is outside of the sixteenth of an inch tolerance. And what you're checking for again is that concentricity. You'll be able to set the feeler gauge on the outside diameter, run your finger across and feel if there's any difference in the ridge there. Now it's very important to check the 12, 6, 3, and 9 o'clock positions all the way around the closures. And depending on what the requirements are for that size of closure, all of those positions should be in tolerance. So after you have checked the concentricity of the head and hub, if you find an area that's out beyond the tolerances that we've described in the uh, procedures, you're going to want to adjust that. You want to make sure this is centered properly. So I've come in here, I've checked this with my feeler gauges, and I can see that it's out just a little bit. So how I adjust that is very simple. You're going to use a wood block and a heavy hammer. And to adjust it, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to push the, the hub hinge arms in just a little bit to push the head over so that it recenters on the hub. We only have to do this a little bit, just enough to bring it back into tolerance. We don't want to push it all the way back out of tolerance on the way, so we want to be gentle about it. So you'll put your wood block up, you'll use your hammer, and you'll hit it solidly on the side. You'll want to do that on the top and the bottom, depending on whether that closure's head is twisted one way or another. After you've hit it a couple times, you're then going to recheck it to make sure that you haven't gone over or that you brought it back into tolerance. So you'll take your feeler gauges, you'll come back over, you'll feel. In this case, we're within tolerance now. So now we can continue on with checking the heel of the head versus the hub. Now it's very important that when you open and close this closure, that the heel of the door where it hits the hub, that they are not in direct contact that would cause the door not to be able to close evenly. So when the door closes all the way, then you have metal to metal contact. But in this case, if the heel was out, you would have contact at the heel surface of the, of the head and the heel surface of the hub. And that would cause the closure to be possibly leak and it would actually cause damage over time. If in the case that your heel is out, you just use a piece of wood. You place it in between the hub and the door, right where the heel is. Then what you would do is you would gently push on the door as to tweak it so that you would be able to recenter the door, pull the heel out away from the hub, the hub surface, and so that when you close the closure that you would have no contact at the heel until you had contact at the toe. So now we're going to discuss how to adjust the toe on your double bolt closure. The toe area is this side of the hub and this side of the head. If you find that this has metal to metal contact when you have the closure closed, you can easily adjust that by using a wood block, placing it in the toe area, closing the closure, and then what you'll have to use is a clamp or a ram on this side and very gently tweak that door out so that the toe areas no longer contact. So now we're going to talk about how to reinstall the O-ring in your double bolt closure. So once you have the O-ring lubricated and ready to be reinstalled, it's been inspected, you're going to put it back in the closure. You're going to start at the 12 and 6 o'clock positions. Place the O-ring at the 12 and place it at the 6. Then you're going to move over to the 3 and the 9 o'clock position. After you have them installed at the 12, the 6, the 3, and the 9, then you're going to finish installing the O-ring all the way around. Now it may want to slip out on you a little bit, and that's okay, but usually it will go right in. You can just smooth it out with your fingers. And that is the proper way to install an O-ring. So after you've replaced the O-ring, back in the O-ring groove, it's properly lubricated and properly seated. 
you're going to want to go in and you're going to lubricate the head surface and the hub sealing surface. Now all you have to do is use the same petroleum jelly thin grease material that you use to put the o-ring in. You're going to place a liberal amount on your hands and you're going to rub that in all the way around the entire diameter of the face. And after you've lubricated the hub, you're going to move over to the head. You're going to do the same thing. Get a liberal amount of lubrication. You're going to go all the way around on the head sealing surface. Make sure that it's properly lubricated. Now that we've lubricated the closure, we've reinstalled the O-ring, we're ready to close the closure up and check the gaps and the timing of the yoke bolt. So you're just going to swing the head closed and you're going to have to tighten the yoke bolts back down. So you're going to tighten this all the way down. You can use your hands, use a wrench. Bring that back into where it's somewhat tight. Now it's very important that you use a torque wrench to torque these down at the last part. Now what you'll want to do is you're going to have to check your paperwork for your torque specifications for that closure. This closure is a 14 inch class 600 and it's required to have a 50 foot pounds of torque on each one of these yokes. So what you'll do, the torque specifications, you're going to bring it to a one third of the torque specifications at first on the top and then the bottom one. Then you're going to bring it around to two thirds of the torque specifications on the top and then the bottom one. And then after that, you'll bring it all the way to full torque. So after you've torqued the closure to the proper specifications, you're going to want to check your gaps. It's going to be on your 12 and 6 o'clock. These gaps are the yoke gaps, and these gaps should be able to be within a sixteenth of an inch of one another. You're going to take your calipers. Very simply, you're going to measure the gap at the top, the 12 o'clock position. You're going to note that dimension. You're going to come down to the 6 o'clock position at the bottom. You're going to measure your gap and you're going to note that position and the gap of that. Write that down. If for some reason those are out of tolerance and they're going to have to be adjusted, we'll get to that in a moment. After you've checked the gaps on the yoke closure for the 6 and 12 o'clock position, you're going to have to go on to the back side of the yokes where they meet the hub and check it at the 9 and 3 o'clock position. Now in the 9 and 3 o'clock position and checking on the back side, you're going to have to use your feeler gauges. And what you're going to find out you're trying to find out is what the gap is between the back side of the hub and the back side of this yoke. After you get the feeler gauges out, you find your dimension, you're going to then write that down, and then you're going to move over to the 3 o'clock position, take your measurement, and then write that down. So now we're going to discuss how to adjust the timing of your yoke bolt closure. We've measured this and we've decided that this yoke needs to move in this direction, 120 thousandths. In order to do that, we're going to have to start by loosening the yoke bolt up. We're going to loosen it so that the nuts hit the outside of the nut pockets. After we've loosened it so that it does that, we're going to remove the yoke bolt, being sure not to rotate the nuts around. So since we need to move this yoke in this direction, 120 thousandths, we need to move this nut in the same direction, 120 thousandths. This is a one and eight thread bolt. That means that one full turn of this nut will be 120 thousandths. So how we're gonna do that, we're gonna start with this nut and we're gonna rotate it one full turn. After we've rotated it one full turn, we're gonna place it back into the nut pockets Tighten it down. We need to reassemble the nut pocket plates, put everything back together, retorque this. After we've got it back to torque specifications, we'll then need to remeasure it and check it. If we find that we're still out, then we would need to move to the bottom yoke bolt and do the same procedure there until we bring it back into tolerance. So after you've adjusted your timing, you're ready to finish closing up the closure. What you're going to need to do is you're going to tighten your PWD. You want the PWD to tighten all the way down. You want the flapper to still be loose. And 
you'll torque the PWD to specifications. The reason that you want the flapper to be loose is so that you know that the gasket on the inside of the PWD is properly seated at the top of the nipple so it doesn't release any pressure. So once that's torqued down, you know that your yoke bolts are torqued down and we know that the flapper is still loose and still moving. We know that we're ready for service and this closure is safe and ready for use.